Hello, this is Tony Hiller from RealClimateScience.com, the climate guy setting the record straight about climate. In this video, I discuss the latest fake news about sea level. The fake news press is full of stories this week about sea level rise. They claim that sea level rise is accelerating, and they claim that people from Pacific Islands are fleeing sea level rise. And the fakest claim of all is that Hurricane Harvey was made worse by sea level rise, and that a carbon tax could have prevented it. The deadliest natural disaster in U.S. history occurred this week in the year 1900. A Category 4 hurricane struck Galveston, Texas and wiped out half the city. 10,000 people died in that storm in 1900. Instead of wringing their hands, whining about trace gases, and talking about carbon taxes, the people of Galveston simply got together and rebuilt the city. They built a giant seawall, and they raised the elevation of the city about three feet by bringing in huge amounts of dirt. This made the city safer in the future. But that's not how modern Democrats operate. They prefer to find somebody to blame and find any excuse to raise taxes. Now let's look at some of the fake forecasts from the past about sea level. Here's a classic from the New York Times in 1986. Many scientists are so sure that the sea level will rise visibly in the coming decades that they're advising planners to adopt new strategies. A predicted rise in sea level of one foot within the next 30 to 40 years will drive much of the Atlantic and Gulf shoreline inward by 100 feet and some of it by more than 1,000 feet. And on the right is a classic from the Canberra Times in 1988. Maldives. Sea level is threatening to completely cover this Indian Ocean nation of 1,196 small islands within the next 30 years. Well, it's been 30 years, and zero of the 1,196 islands have gone underwater. They only missed by 100% of their forecast. And then they went on to say that the Maldives would run out of drinking water by the year 1992. This is what the Maldives looked like earlier today. I don't really see a lot of people fleeing sea level rise in this photograph. And they don't look particularly thirsty either. They don't look like they ran out of water 25 years ago. Now let's look at the actual sea level data. This is the NOAA tide gauge for Manhattan, but it shows that sea level has been rising at the same rate since President Lincoln was president. It hasn't accelerated, it hasn't decelerated. It's been rising about 2.84 millimeters per year pretty steadily since the days when carbon dioxide was below 300 parts per million. That tells us that sea level rise in New York has nothing to do with carbon dioxide. And even more interesting is the fact that sea level has actually been falling in New York since the year 2010. We've already seen that islands haven't drowned as forecast, and here's the actual sea level data for Tuvalu. Sea level there is about the same as it was 20 years ago. Sea level at New York is also about the same as it was 20 years ago, and it's been falling for the last six years. Nevertheless, the press keeps bombarding us with fake pictures like this one showing Manhattan underwater. And here's the same story from 1934. Well, melting icebergs engulfed the world, and they had a picture of Manhattan underwater. Nothing ever changes with the fake news press. The only significant sources of new water for the oceans are Antarctica and Greenland. And NASA says that Antarctica is gaining ice. And a brand new study from scientists at the Danish Meteorological Institute also said that Greenland gained ice over the past year. In fact, they said that the surface mass gain in Greenland was the fifth highest since 1981. And also interesting to note that the melt season ended very early in Greenland this year. They're already gaining ice this autumn, which is very unusual. So Antarctica has been steadily gaining ice, and Greenland gained ice this year. That means that sea level is falling, not rising. None of this is surprising because in the year 2008, President Obama healed the planet and he slowed the rise of the seas. President Obama was obviously far more powerful than King Canute, who took his subjects to the sea just to show them that he didn't control the rise of the seas. Looking longer term, sea level has been rising for about 20,000 years. In fact, it's risen about 400 feet during the last 20,000 years. It rose particularly fast from about 14,000 years ago to about 8,000 years ago, but recent sea level rise has been quite slow by comparison. Here's an article from the BBC from 15 years ago. Lost City could rewrite history. 
The remains of what has been described as a huge lost city may force historians and archaeologists to radically reconsider their view of ancient human history. Marine scientists say archaeological remains discovered 36 meters, 120 feet underwater in the Gulf of Cambay off the western coast of India could be over 9,000 years old. So we know that sea level has risen 120 feet over the last 9,000 years. It has nothing to do with humans, it has nothing to do with carbon dioxide, and it certainly has nothing to do with taxes. It's all just fake news. Antarctica and Greenland both gained ice this year. It tells us that sea level fell this year, not rose. Like with everything else progressives and climate alarmists talk about, it's all just fake news. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science for a long time.